Jameis was great. Jameis was great. Um, and, and, and Jameis understands how, how our business operates. Um, and and uh, he was great during the whole process. He and I had a couple of, uh, of, of good, you know, call it tough conversations. Um, and uh, uh, I thought it was a good process. I think it's still a position that we want to try to add to, um, but we certainly feel good about um, being able to get Traquan Smith back, um, having Deontay Hardy, um, having Mike Thomas come back. So we feel we feel good about the position, uh, but yet it's still a position that I think we want to try to add to. Uh, really tough. Um, Again, that's part of the business that we're in. Um, certainly, we would have loved to have been able to have him back. Um, I'm happy he got a number that he felt good about. Um, and and uh, it'll be his, uh, his play, um, his leadership, his um, ability in the locker room to, to just be um, uh, a leader in the locker room. I think that's that's we're we're gonna miss that. Um, good veteran safety um, has some flexibility. Can play uh, both positions in the back end. Can play strong. Can play free. Uh, has range in the back end. Uh, smart. Instinctive. Uh, remember watching him, you know, coming out of Florida. Really liked him then, um, and and seeing him at the Jets. He was somebody that we felt like had that kind of versatility that we're looking for. I think, look, in a perfect world scenario, yes, um, but it doesn't always work out that way. Um, I go all the way back to. You know, when I was here the first time we won the Super Bowl, and it was Roman Harper and, and, and Darren Sharper, and they were two different types of players. And so um, I think it's our job as coaches to figure out exactly who we have and how we have to utilize those players. Um, and certainly in a perfect world scenario, you like to have the flexibility that, you know, they can both be uh, play back and play, play down in the paint. But it, it, it – uh, it's probably um, the exception to the rule rather than the rule. Well, look, it, there's a lot of time between now and the start of the season, so I would anticipate there will be a lot of different things that will happen between now and, and then. I can't say exactly what those things are going to be right now. Uh, but, yeah, I would anticipate that uh, we're certainly always looking to see if there's a way that we can help improve our team. A little, a little bit of the same in terms of just some versatility. Um, he, he can play uh, defensive tackle. He can play nose. He can play a strong side end. So there's some flexibility there. I also like the fact that, you know, Ryan coached him. Um, and so there's a little bit of familiarity with the player in that regard. Hey, Shereen. How are you? Awesome. Excuse me? I see him. I see him a lot in the role that uh, uh, Jeff Heath was was utilized in. Um, I see him being a, a guy that can play multiple spots. Um, he played a lot of like dime linebacker in Kansas City, um, and, and so I think again, there's another player that I think is smart. Uh, he's tough, um, and he's got a lot of versatility. Yeah, I mean, how do I say this without getting myself in trouble? Um, look, I, I think we, I think we play with the rules that are set before us, and and I'm I'm not necessarily always a big proponent of trying to uh, change a lot of stuff. I kind of like the game the way it is, um, and you know, 
if, if, that's, if that's the rules that we have to play by, then you know, it's our job as a defense to go out there and stop them. Um, well, yeah, I mean, he's probably the greatest quarterback of all time. So, you know, there's a little bit of like, damn, I thought we were done with this guy. Um, but, uh, but yeah, look, certainly we, we, uh, we enjoy the challenge of having to go up against him. Um, and, and, and they're, they're a hell of a team. And, and, and so, um, we just, I don't know that I had a big reaction to it, you know? I mean, a little, a little surprised. Um, but yet, look, it is what it is. Look, we've been fortunate specifically when we've played them at their place that we've played, you know, really well defensively. Um, and uh, if I was going to credit anything, I'd say we got a lot of really good players. And, um, and so when you got a lot of really good players and you put a decent plan together, you know, good things happen. score more points than they do. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I think um, I think we want to be able to um, it, it all sounds cliche, you know, you want to be a balanced offense, you want to be able to run the ball, play action, all those kinds of things. I think ultimately, you know, at the end of the day, really as a team, I want our team to be tough. Um, I want our team to be smart, play the game the right way, like understand situational football, don't beat your um, And I want our team to, you know, compete on every single play. And I think if you boil it down to those simple three things and you can do those three things, I think you're going to be pretty good. Um, yeah, I think we've done a, I think we've done a pretty decent job, um, you know, in terms of, of this offseason of trying to fill a few spots. Um, certainly the quarterback must is always the biggest one that you've got to, you got to make sure that you feel, we feel good about where we're at there. And there's still a couple of things, you know, on the roster that I think we want to be able to do and, 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 um, but we're going to take our time in doing that. Um, I've found that, and we found as an organization that usually our best moves um, are, are usually not the ones that, that everybody wants to write about and, and talk about and, and you know tweet about or whatever. Um, our best moves are, you know, going and getting a, a guy like a Demario Davis that wasn't like this splash signing, um, but fits our culture, fits a specific need that we have um, and, and has a uh, – he's, he's the type of player or the type of personality that we're looking for and it just becomes a good fit and they have success. Um, and so um, I think that's what we're continuing to do. No, not really. Not really because – you know, I think I think people on the outside world look at things and, and say, "Wow, that was a that was a great that that was a great signing," or that was, and and if you really look over the course of free agency, and you'd say um, they signed a certain player for this high number and big contract, and then you know, a lot of times three years later, you might look down the road and you'd say, "Well, this, you know." He's no longer with that team for one reason or another. Generally, it becomes some sort of salary cap casualty or whatever. Um, and so um, I think there's, there's times where that, that can benefit you. Um, but I'd say as an overall philosophy, um, I'd rather augment our team through free agency and really build our team through the draft. Um, well, I think the number one thing was 14 to three. 
So 14 touchdowns to three interceptions. I think that was the biggest thing that that showed me that um, you know he can be our quarterback. Is is uh, I thought he did a great job of, of protecting the ball and 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 we were five and two with him as a starting quarterback. And um, so I felt like he was a guy that gave us an opportunity to to win. And so um, yeah, so we felt good about that. Um, yeah, I think, I think probably the biggest thing was like, I thought he did a really good job with his decision making. Um, and he protected the football. He put our team in a position to, 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 to win. And I think in our league, like the number one thing you have to do is figure out how not to lose games, um, before you can really figure out how to win them. And, um, Look, I thought he did a great job of, of understanding the type of team that we have and putting our, putting our team in a position to go win, and, 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 uh, and he did a good job of that. Uh, he is, I don't know, if, I hate to put timelines or anything like that, but I think he's on, I think he's on course and, 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 um, and he'll be ready when we need him to be ready. Well, look, I just think the longer you're around somebody, the more you're around somebody, the, the, the more you get a chance to kind of get to know them a little bit and, and, and get a feel for who they are. And not, not just my relationship with him, but his relationship with me and get to know me a little bit. So, um, yeah, I think, I, think it, I think it's an organic process. I think it just happens naturally. And, and uh, the more you spend time with somebody, the, the better that relationship gets. Hey, Jared, what's up, buddy? I'm I'm one and zero in my second stint. <laughs> yeah, um, I I think overall I would just say uh, I'm I'm I've seen a lot more, I, I've done a lot more. I'm I'm way more experienced than I was. Um, the first time I did this. And, and so, you know, things don't really surprise me as much anymore as maybe they would have, you know, going through it for the first time. And so um, I kind of wake up every day and know that there's going to be a certain challenge that I'm going to have to deal with every day. And, and I go into the office with the mindset of, you know, got a couple of problems that I'm going to have to solve today and, 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 and know that not every, every day is going to be the going to be a perfect day and um and i don't think i was probably quite ready for that the first time to be honest with you and um uh, and and i think i'm i'm way more prepared for that now well i i think this i think when you watch um one of the best to ever do it um it's 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 a really cool experience and a, and a good growing experience for 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 me and I think just watching the confidence that he had in doing his job and really just the understanding that um, man you're in you're in charge and you got to do it the way that you think is the best in your mind for your team. Um, and that's probably kind of the coolest thing that I learned just in watching him. Yeah, it's probably not my position to really comment too much on, on coaches on other teams other than to just say I, I think he was outstanding and I think he's got a bright future. Um, yeah, look, I think anytime you have um, good players that compete against each other on a daily basis, you don't have any, any, any choice but to really get better. Um, and so I think, uh, I think that was a huge benefit for us. 
Um, I think Teron's going to be missed um, in terms of his leadership in the room, in terms of his play on the field. Um, but at the same time, I feel confident um, with the guys that we have, you know, in our building to be able to step up and 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 uh, and fill in in his role. And 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 quite honestly, you know, there's been some time that Teron's missed on the field, and, and guys have stepped into that role and done a good job for us. So um, so we feel good about where we're at in that position. Yeah, I feel feel good about it. You know, I feel real good about it. Um, he's done a great job for us, and um, have all the confidence in the world that he can step into that position if that's uh, where we end up being. Well, look, I think part of being the head coach is establishing those relationships with your players, regardless of who those players were. Um, I do feel like that, you know, um, Mike's kind of been a little bit on the periphery, really, for the last couple of years because of the injury. Um, and I just feel like it's important that, you know, he is one of our better players. And I think uh, that relationship between he and I is important. And, and so, um, so, yeah, I felt like it was a, a, a cool deal to go out and, and, and see him in, in California going through the rehab process and just get, a t get some time to just visit with him just personally um, and get to know him a little bit better. Yeah. No, I don't think it was a clear the air type of deal. It, it was really just um, – me going to see one of our better players and, and kind of get to know him a little bit. Malcolm? Um, you know, I'm not sure. I think that's probably a question for Malcolm. I know you were coaching the other side of the ball, but uh, what are the Lions getting in here, Griffin? Excuse me? Here, Griffin? Um, what are the Lions getting yeah, I, I think they're getting a, a, a competitive football player that can do a lot of different things. I think he's smart. Um, I think he'll be a good fit um, for them. And then, you know, look, obviously Dan coached him, so he's he feels good about him. What about your time working with Aaron Glenn? I know you said, you know, you talked about other coaches on other teams, but um, you talked about... AG's my guy, man. We, he and I played together, so um, I think he's outstanding. Um, I think he did a hell of a job last year. Um, and I think, again, he's a guy that's going to be moving up in our profession. Yeah, you think head coach is this the year future for him? I would think so. I think uh, tough, competitive, you know, he's a guy that uh, can do all the, all the dirty work for us. I think he's probably a little bit of an underrated player. Um, I think he's been great in our in our locker room. He's a good leader for us, um, and really, you know, I think, you know, you talk about a lot of superstars, and 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 they get a lot of the uh, limelight, a lot of the credit, a lot of the the notoriety. But it's it's guys like that that uh, you want to be able to fill your team with, um, just those tough, smart, competitive type guys. Well, I would, I would see his role being very similar to the role that he's played, you know. Um, and he's, he's done a really good job in that role. Look, we, you know, we kept Pete Carmichael on as the, as the offensive coordinator, which was, which was really cool to be able to do. And, and, uh, and so the philosophy offensively you guys asked me about, um, the role for guys, like I see this being the same offense that, that – that uh, that we've been for the last 16 years, and um, and hopefully we can we can continue to work to improve on it. Um, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but it, it, but it but it's it's because that's the type of player that we're looking for 
tough, smart, competitive. He's got all those qualities. Um, and to come in, you know, as a rookie and play that position, you know, linebacker is one of the more difficult positions to play because it's the only position that you play where things are happening on every side of you. There's things that are happening in front of you, things that are happening to your right, to your left, behind you, and you have to be aware of all those different things. Um, play the run, play the pass. It, it's, a, it's a challenging position to play, and I thought he really did a really nice job of stepping in. He played both Will and Mike and was ready to play some Sam if we needed him to. So um, I'm really excited about Pete. Look, I feel like we saw a lot of really good things out of Jameis in the first seven weeks last, last year. Um, you know, he's had two, let's call it two seasons in the offense. So um, I felt like as, as, as the season kind of wore on last year, he got more and more comfortable with what we were asking him to do. Um, and I see that process continuing, um, continuing this year in, in, in um, feel good about where he's at, excited about working with him. Um, I think he brings an element of throwing the ball down the field that, that maybe we didn't quite have as much uh, in years past. So, um, and, and he did a great job of protecting the football. Um, number one would be good players um, who understand the plan and go out and execute it you know i mean it's it's really not that complicated it, it's you know we, we we try to take away some of the things that they do really well um and and we got you know we got we got good players um and and usually when you look at teams that have success i don't care who you're talking about or or who they're playing you know, if they have success, usually it's because they got some pretty good players doing it. Um, well, I think if you ask the fans, I think the fans would say that uh, Atlanta would be the number one rival. Um, I don't, I don't really get into the whole rival thing. You know what I mean? Like, it's a game. And our job is to go out and win the game. So whoever that is, whether that's, you know, Tampa or Dallas or Green Bay or, you know, it's a it's a NFC team, and we got to go out there and play and, and and go win. So I don't know. Look, do I think our guys get excited about playing against Tom Brady, who's probably the best to ever play the game? Yeah, I think they do get excited about that. Um, but. But I don't know that we, 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 we treat it a whole lot differently. Yeah, I don't know that there's a there's like this end goal in mind that 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 hey, I want to make sure that they know this about me. Um, it's just Let's go sit down, have a conversation. Let's, you know, have a meal, drink a cup of coffee, and and let's talk, you know, and let's talk about, um, you know, I give them my, my background, you know, find out what their background is. I think once you kind of know where people come from, you kind of have a little bit of better idea of maybe why they do some of the things that they do, you know. Um, so it... You know, it's not this like calculated plan of, wow, I, I want to make sure I do this. It's just let's go hang out for a little bit. Um, two really good coaches um, that I think are, are fully capable and qualified to do the job. Um, and so, um, I felt like that was the 
that was kind of the, 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 the right way to go. It's a little bit of a way to reward both those guys. Um, you know, I, I think it's probably one of the more talented defensive staffs that I've ever been a part of. Um, and, and I think both Ryan and Chris are certainly deserving of, the, of, of that title and, the, and that role. Um, and, and so why not give it to them? Well, yeah, I think all I think all of that takes place. Um, you know, I don't think we make any decision uh, solely based off of well, we're going to sign this guy in free agency because the draft isn't as good, or we're not going to sign a guy in free agency because the draft is really good in that position. Um, I, I think it's just all kind of part of the part of the puzzle. Mike was the only one that I went specifically to go visit. Um, and a lot of it was because he was going to be doing his rehab out in California. And so it was easier for me to try to get out there to go visiting. Plus, I got a couple days in Malibu. I, I think the role for Taysom... Um, really is going to be a lot more of the um, kind of F tight end, move tight end type of role. I think that's, I think that's the direction that we need to move with him because I think he can be um, one of the better players in the league in, in that role. And, and so um, I don't like having Taysom – if Jameis is out there playing quarterback, I don't really like Taysom standing next to me on the sideline. Um, and so I think you'll see him more in that type of role. I haven't even gotten that far. We'll talk about jersey colors later. <laughs> we'll see. I know. I know. I can't hear you. Uh, doing well. He was just back in, in uh, New Orleans for a checkup just uh, yesterday, I think it was. You know, it, look, he showed flashes of the player that we think he can be. Um, uh, but yet, there's just not a lot of, there's just not a lot of evidence right now. And so, um, uh, I'm anxious to, to, to get back with him and, and, and work with him because I think there's a, there's a talented player there um, and, and hopefully we can get him going and, and, and we can get him to hopefully reach that potential that he has. Look, it's hard to really say. I mean, um, everybody wants to kind of compare this draft to other drafts and, and where's it deep, where's it not deep. You know, the honest to God's truth is you're not going to know until three years from now really how, how good it was um, because it's not until they get in and, and, and start playing that you kind of realize exactly what, what you have. So um, I do know that I feel like the numbers are maybe a little bit more, um, and and I feel like really you're probably looking at at you know some guys maybe in years past that might have been you know late round draft choice that that might be you know available as as college free agents. How's it going? Um, 
look, I haven't really put a whole lot of thought into it other than, you know, we've had free agency in the NFL for a long time and, and um, um, that's part of the business of pro football. And, and certainly um, there's times when, when, when the player has the leverage and, and then I think there's times when the team has the leverage. And I think um, just like any other business, you know, when you have the leverage, you want to utilize it to, to, your, to your benefit. So I, I, just think it's, I just think it's business. All good, guys? Okay, man. Appreciate it.